What's up everyone? It's Ariana and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this week's video on my channel is about a particular book that I just finished reading. So I thought, why not do a review on it? So here's the book. Sputnik Sweetheart. I mean, it's an odd name, right? So I've never heard of the, this name used before, but reading the name, you could probably think and come to the conclusion that it's going to be about love or an idea of a love story and you're correct so before we get into this you're probably expecting a good review on the book but I'm really sorry to disappoint you it's not going to be the greatest review I mean I could go on about how great and inspiring the book is but then that would all be a lie <laughs> but not to get me wrong not not to get anything wrong I simply adore Haruki Murakami. He's an inspiration in itself. Like, come on. But if you're like me and you've read multiple Murakami books, you start to notice this trend. He uses style, tone, themes, morales that are just far too much alike. And this repetitiveness, it gets really tiring. How many works can one person really handle about people disappearing without a trace? Okay, but let me give you the gist about what the story is about. Basically, the narrator which identifies himself as Kay, is a school teacher who desperately falls in love with this girl named Sumir. Sumir, her only wish in life is to be a writer. But then Sumir falls in love with this older, more sophisticated businesswoman named Mew. Mew decides to give Sumir a job. They are on creating many, many more complications. Mew decides to give her this job, and despite of all the red flags, like, Mew being very secretive and having a mysterious past and being much, much older and not to mention she's a woman, Sumir still doesn't, it still doesn't stop Sumir from loving her and wanting to go on this really big business trip to Europe. So they go together. They're on creating problems between Sumir and Kay because Sumir does, is too busy and she doesn't have time to write to Kay to to Kay anymore. Kay and Sumir are lifelong friends. They've been friends for a long time. Kay just happens to be in love with her. And so while Sumir and Mew are in Europe, Kay is at home trying to get over this girl and trying to move on. And right when you think it's done and the storyline is complete, Kay gets word that Sumir is missing and it has vanished off the coast of Greece. So obviously Kay is going to go to Greece to give any help that he can give. And he spends about over 10 pages rambling about how he skipped work and how he's packed all his things for his journey and his thoughts advancing into the journey. And he hasn't even gotten to Greece yet. And it just advances the story in zero. No way. No way. Actually, to think about it, 25% of the book is a description of random people, places, and things that has been come across. The story is... The story's just too much for me. I was left with so many whys and questions that just couldn't be answered. At times, I would find myself taking the longest pauses, and when I mean long, I mean a couple of hours, and I would just dwell on specific details and try to find their meanings. Like, maybe it's just a personal preference of mine to just want answers, you know? But, and I get Murakami, I get his attempt. I, it's a reference to life and how it's open-ended, which they don't have any rule of composition or whatsoever. But the thing is, this book does not have a plot. Leaving your work totally unresolved is a different thing than leaving your plot open. For example, I do art, and I consider myself somewhat of an artist, but what more Kami did with this book is like me painting half a canvas and calling it done. Like, no, it needs to be finished. I don't want to bash the entire book. There are some scenes and characters that did excel and show the true Murakami way which we all love. I really like in the book, for example, how Murakami breaks multiple stereotypes through, for example, Sumir's stepmom supporting her decision of quitting college when the father was clearly against it. One of my favorite scenes also was when Kay comes back from Greece and gets a call from his married girlfriend, his married girlfriend, that her son 
shoplifted and so the security guard that caught the son shoplifting wants to talk to the son's school teacher which is k um it's really random but kind of entertaining theme um these favorites of mine these favorites mine aren't really enough to save the whole story because the novel in itself is not good but i have to admit they do show that Murakami is able to create somewhat realistic characters. But I also noticed as I was reading, I noticed a kind of shift in laws of reality. And all of a sudden, we're in this world where anything's possible. This sudden change sort of undermines what is set out to be a modern love story that I thought I had gotten myself into, where it dealt with intellectual love, lesbianism, then suddenly changed into alternate universes and doppelgangers. I guess you could say that Murakami is trying to tie in the idea of life-changing experiences, but making it so extraterrestrial and otherworldly reverts the reader and make, it makes it difficult for us to emphasize with any of the characters. Their problems are just so out of our world that it makes it impossible, really. I was just not able to feel anything for any of them. I couldn't care for them. And usually you want your reader to feel some sort of passions for your for your characters, for, to a reason to stick up for them. It didn't happen here for me. I mean, I'll tell you what, it was an easy read. Um, maybe it's just me comparing it too hard to his other works, but it was just disappointingly disappointing. Like, I expected so much more. I, I guess I just find myself looking for another wind up bird in every other Murakami book I read. But just a word of advice, if you haven't read anything of his already, read his earlier works. Okay, I mean, that was a bit harsh, but just to put it in other words, this book was not as good. Some parts are interesting, I'll admit, but it's not something that would make you go read everything the author has written. For example, you don't read Sputnik Sweetheart and say, oh my gosh, let's go read every other Murakami book. It, it doesn't inspire you to convince you to do that. Clearly, we all can agree that Murakami is a talented writer, but I just do not know what he was doing in this book. It, it doesn't ever go anywhere. Like, I'm not, I'm gonna try to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, maybe Murakami just didn't know how to end this novel on lesbian romanticism. So he took fragments of out-of-body experiences and used it for the second part of the book. And bam, that's a book. Yeah. Just sucks. After part one, I just am aimlessly reading 50 pages until I see a connection at all. It's like he used so many fillers to make what have what would have been a short story into a long novel length um, story. You just have to admit it's not fair to the writer. I enter the book with an open mind, good faith, expecting real world resolutions, and instead I find zero resolution and an even more confused mind than what I entered with. The writing is painful to read, I have to say, but I, I wanted to, to give him the benefit of the doubt, like I said, and just blame it on like the translator. But his overuse of the word, quote, incredible, has no excuse whatsoever. I mean, even writing, even the writing of the so-called brilliant Sumir, which, okay, she aspires to be a writer, there's no difference in the, tra the, um, the narration of K and Sumir's work. There's no difference. And just to notice that the copyright date is in 2001, that makes it surprisingly recent. This work just seems incredibly juvenile for our generation and modernism. Like, we see that everywhere today. And like I said, like there are flashes of Murakami that I love here and there. But I'm warning you, if you're new to this author, please do not start with Sputnik, sweetheart. That's it for this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed my overly exaggerated and descriptive analysis of Murakami's Sputnik Sweetheart. Let me know what you think. Please go comment on the boxes below because I always love to hear what my subscribers and viewers are thinking. Um, go like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week.